Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you a cool way to use the new quick sampler in Logic Pro 10.5, particularly how to use the slice mode to slice and chop up different loops and samples to create your own custom instruments, your own custom beats and compositions. So right out of the gate, let me show you a quick musical idea that uses this slicing function in quick sampler. Here with this you can cut up loops into different pieces and do your own thing with it. So just to start off here I'm going to go up and I'm going to use uh, splice for this. But let's see we've got this kind of vocal, like a vocal vocoder loop here. Cool so let me just drag that in and it gives you two options original or optimized. I'm going to use original and then if you click on the slice mode what you'll see is it detects the transients in the loop and assigns each transient to a different uh, MIDI note. So you can play these on your MIDI controller. So C1 is nothing. D, uh, D sharp one is this tiny little sliver right here. If you want to zoom in or out, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse, or if you're using a magic mouse, you can just swipe up or down. If you're on a MacBook and you're using a trackpad, uh, just use a two finger swipe up or down to zoom in or out. But uh, you'll see that D sharp here is just like the front end transient. And then D1 is the actual sort of uh, the vowel. So what you can do is you can double click on these and get rid of them. And there we go. So let me zoom back out here. I have C sharp, D1, D sharp. Uh, we have E1. And then the tail end is uh, F1 here. I'm gonna pull this over to make more of E1. And I'm gonna pull this over just to include a bit more of this last thing here. So you can do some kind of cool, uh, you know, vocal chops and things like that with this. Let's go over to this next thing here. It looks like there's uh, another one of those you know, transients, um, yeah, there's another one there, like a double transient marker there. Kind of do the same thing. So this starts on F sharp one. So between these two. I'm sure we can come up with something that's uh, pretty cool. So I'm going to set that aside. I'll just call this um, vocal chop vocoder. All right, so let's do another one. This time I'm going to do sort of like a bass synth instrument. So I'll hit Option Command N, create a new blank empty channel strip on a software instrument. And then I will load up Quick Sampler. If you didn't already know how to do this, that's how you do it. And you can also use Apple Loops for this. Um, so you can find any loop that you like in here. Drums, synthesizers, whatever it may be. And you can just drag it in. I'm going to click Slice to slice this up. And here's what this uh, loop sounded like on its own. So it's all pretty much one note and an octave higher. I really like these notes on the end here. So there's definitely something cool I can uh, do with that as well. And I realize the pitch of everything doesn't match up yet. I've got loops in different keys. I'll fix that in just a moment. All right, so I've got another quick sampler up here on a new track. And I've got this simple kick snare beat in the Logic Loop library. Sounds like this. Cool. So just drag that in. Slice it up. Cool. 
Uh, one thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to adjust the amplitude envelope here. And what I'm going to do is pull down the sustain and then pull forward the decay to shorten these samples a bit. And what that'll do is it'll pull some of the ring off of the back end of the samples. There's a plugin I use quite a bit from Waves, it's called uh, Torque. And this sort of lets you detune the harmonics of the drums, because I, I feel like these are a little high, um, especially the snare drum is a bit high. So I'm going to torque these down a bit. Yeah, so that's a little, little nicer sounding. It's got a little more of a low end uh, emphasis to it. Okay, so that's going to be my uh, kick and snare track. Cool. So I'm going to uh, get that loop, drag that in, slice it up. So I'm getting basically two samples, a short one and then a long one. Now you could repeat this process as much as you want um, with as many tracks and loops as you want and create as many custom instruments as you like. Um, I'm just going to keep it simple with four for this video just so the video isn't an hour long. All of the loops that I've dragged in are all in 4-4 time, and they all have a straight 8th note or 16th note feel to them. But sort of as a proof of concept, the beat that I'm going to build with these, I'm actually going to build with a uh, 12th note grid, which is an 8th note triplet grid. So I'm going to work in live loops to build out my beat. However, I want to make sure that the tuning of my bass synth and the tuning of the vocoder track are the same so that they don't sound out of key. So let me open up the uh, vocal chop instrument here again. So if you're using third party loops, it may or may not tell you what the key is. I'm wondering if this little thing on the end here, A, is telling me that this is in the key of A. But let me pull up under metering the tuner. And these are all just one note anyway. Yeah, so it's uh, it's A, and then just uh, up an octave A. So let's go back to the bass synth, and let's see what that is tuned in. It does not say. Yeah, it's also in A. So l let's say, for example, that it wasn't in A, <laughs> and you needed to retune it. If you just go to the, the pitch section here, and you just pull this up or pull this down, this will transpose the entire loop to a different key. So you can use that to uh, match the tuning of, of multiple different tracks. Okay, so I lucked out there. All right, so let me start by creating a basic beat with the kick and snare. I'm gonna right click, go to create pattern cell. You could also create a MIDI cell and use the piano roll editor if you prefer. Now the thing is because each of the slices uh, move up chromatically, um, they move up chromatically here as well. So I've got slice one, slice two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Because I'm using an eighth note triplet grid, I'm going to change to the pattern step right here to eighth note triplets. So now you can see that each quarter note is divided into three rather than two or four. And then I can change the number, a number of steps. So 12 steps would be one bar, 24 steps would be two bars. And let me just build a beat on this. Okay, so I've got that uh, snare and kick beat on scene one. Let's say I want that on scene two instead. Uh, let me just duplicate the cell back over to scene one though. And on this one, I'm going to pull out everything except for the kicks. Um, just to keep it simple, sort of like an intro. Now another way, another way to do this is you could come up with something in real time rather than using the step sequencer. Um, you could just record it in. So with my hi-hats... I'm going to do something like that. So I'll just uh, press record and play in my idea. And there we go. 
Then I can go down here in my MIDI editor, quantize this all to eighth note triplets. I'll pull down the strength a bit, just so it's not perfectly quantized. And now if I play both of these together, I'll hit Command Return to stop all cells. I'm gonna move this over to the second scene though. Let's see what this sounds like with the other beat. All right, so now I'm gonna work on my bass line. Um, I'm gonna work in the step sequencer for this as well, but you'll notice that all of the notes aren't here. It's ended on uh, B1 here, which is not all of the slices in Quick Sampler. So what I'm gonna do is go up to the little plus sign here, go down to notes, go to labeled notes, and then select add all, and it'll add in all labeled notes so I can take advantage of these notes over here as well. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. Let me try out the note repeat function on some of these quick notes here. Okay, let's see what we can do with our vocal chop vocoder here. I'm gonna create a pattern cell for this as well. I'll add all labeled notes like I did before. I'm probably only gonna use really these first six though, so you know what? I just want C sharp one through E one. So I don't need C one. And then I need F sharp one. So I don't need F one. And then I need F sharp one, G sharp one, uh, and A one. And then everything else can go. So I guess I didn't really need all of those. So I'll just delete those. Um, so it's just those eight samples. <laughs> And this also needs sort of like another bass part. So I'm going to duplicate the bass synth and I'm going to call this uh, bass synth filter. I'll uh, just duplicate this down here. I'm going to do something completely different with it, but uh, just to keep the... Uh, um, just to keep the step rate settings there. Go back to step on and off. And uh, with this, I think I'm just gonna jump back and forth between two octaves. All right, so off screen, I uh, added a few things. I added an effects track, um, just added a few different audio loops and samples in here. One's just uh, sort of a white noise crash at the beginning. And then there's a, uh, a like a white noise riser. And then sort of like an orchestral percussion hit. And this is just to accent each of the three sections at the beginning. By the way, some of these you'll notice are loops, some are not loops. Uh, if you click on one of the cells, Go over to your region inspector here and uncheck loop. It'll make that sample or loop a one shot. So it'll only play one time. Um, so you don't have to worry about it uh, looping itself. So that's just some transitions. Uh, for the hi-hats, I gave them a little uh, EQ and delay. I filtered out a lot of the low end in them and then also added some delay to give it a uh, more ambient sound. So nothing too crazy there. Um, for the kick and snare, that's all the same. The bass filter, that's all the same. The bass synth, I added a plugin called Crush Station from Eventide. It's a really cool um, distortion plugin that I've been playing around with lately. Um, particularly, I like it because you can add octaves to your distortion, and that you, there's also a mix blend as well, so you can blend between the dry signal and the wet signal. So it's sort of adding like a low octave uh, to that bass there. And then on the vocoder, I added the Tremolo plugin in Logic just to 
make uh, the little vocal chops jump left and right. And then the last thing I did was I added in a new track um, called Snare Riser. It's essentially just a single snare sample that I found. And uh, what I did with it is I built a bit of a snare riser for this middle section and then just layered the drum, uh, the snare drum with it here in the third section. And also, you'll notice that there's three sections now instead of two. I basically just copied and pasted everything over from the first section to scene two and then copied everything from scene two over to scene three um, just to sort of extend uh, the intro. So here's what this sounds like uh, right now. So it's not perfect by any means, but uh, it's a start. And the vast majority of this was created by taking loops that I liked the tonal character of, chopping them up and repurposing them as new musical ideas. Um, so I find this an incredibly creative way um, to use loops and also sort of use the loop as your sound source, much like you would in a synthesizer by tweaking the oscillators or you know, tweaking the modulation of a synthesizer. Here you're just tweaking um, uh, source material that's already processed, that's already recorded, and turning it into your own thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thanks for the support and thanks for watching.